Hello, welcome back. In this video, we'll discuss the applications of optical fibers. Optical fibers have a number of applications in various fields of science and technology. All these applications have been classified broadly into three. The first category of applications include the illumination and short distance image transmission. Second category of applications is communications. The third category is sensors. The first category that is the illumination and short distance image transmission, they are widely used in medical applications and certain industrial applications. The communications applications, they include fiber optic communications, LAN and WAN. In communications, a part of communications is computer networking. In computer networking, they are used in LAN and WAN. In sensors, a new family of sensors have been developed using the optical fibers. They include pressure sensors, temperature sensors and magnetic field sensors. We shall start our discussion with the image transmission. A large number of fibers whose ends are bound together, these fibers are properly ground and polished, form flexible bundle, something like this. Look at this bundle of optical fibers. You have a large number of optical fibers bundled. The fiber ends are properly ground and polished. One of the ends of the optical fiber bundle acts as an input end while the other acts as the output end. If the relative positions of the fiber terminations at both the ends are not same, then we have what is known as incoherent bundle. The incoherent bundles are essentially used for illumination purposes. In such bundles, there is no correlation in the position of the fiber terminations at one end of the bundle with that at the other end of the bundle. So they are used for illumination purpose. They are also called as flexible light carriers. They essentially carry light from one end of the fiber to the other end. However, when the fibers are correctly arranged so that the terminations occupy the same relative position in both of the bound ends of the bundle, the bundle is said to be a coherent bundle. If fibers are carefully arranged so that the terminations occupy the same relative positions in both of the bound ends of the bundle, then the bundle is said to be coherent. And these coherent bundles are useful for image transmission over short distances. Coherent fiber bundles can be used in image transmission over short distances. They are also called as flexible image carriers. So the image is transmitted in this fashion. The input end of the fiber is brought close to the image surface which is properly illuminated. Each of the fibers in the bundle will carry one particular small area of the image intensity and the same is reproduced on the other side. On the top row, the extreme end is an empty circle means it is illuminated. The other circles are dark means they are not illuminated. Similarly on this side, in the first column also you see all are dark circles. Here also you will see all circles are darkened are giving dark output on the receiving end or the output end. So there is a correspondence between the darkness or brightness of the fibers on this end and on this end, which means the optical fiber bundle is carrying the image from one end of the optical fiber bundle to the other end of the optical fiber bundle. Since the fiber bundle is flexible, we call them as flexible image carriers. The image transmission principle is used in endoscopy. Now we shall briefly discuss about the endoscopy. One of the most important applications of a coherent bundle is endoscopy. In medicine, endoscopy is used as a diagnostic tool. An endoscope is essentially an optical instrument which facilitates visual inspection of the internal organs of the human body. For that matter, any animal. It is also called as a fibroscope. In an endoscope, we will be having about 10,000 fibers that are bundled in about 1 millimeter diameter cable. Objects with a separation of 70 micrometers can be visualized using an endoscope. Now we shall look at the construction of the endoscope briefly. The endoscope will have two fiber bundles. The first fiber bundle is outer illuminating fiber bundle. And the second bundle is inner imaging fiber bundle. So these are the two bundles that are used in an endoscope. 
Through the illuminating fiber bundle, we launch light into the inner parts of the body. So we have a light source and certain optics is used here to make the beam collimated and focused on the outer illuminating fiber bundle. Here we have a beam splitter. The beam splitter splits the incident beam into two or more number of equal or unequal parts depending on its structure. So the beam splitter enables us to launch light equally into the all fibers that are present in the outer illuminating fiber bundle. So light is carried from the source to the object using the outer illuminating fiber bundle. After light reflects from the object, it will be received by the inner imaging bundle. To make the light enter into the inner imaging fiber bundle, we'll have a telescopic arrangement. The eyepiece and the objective lens here put together, they make the telescopic arrangement. The prism is used to make the reflected beam to enter the objective lens. Once the reflected light enters the objective lens, it falls on the inner imaging fiber bundle and reaches eyepiece and from there one can view the image of the inner surface of the human body. That is how an endoscope works. The second category is communications. In communications, they are extensively used in optical communications or fiber optic communications. They are used in LAN means local area network and similarly they are also used in WAN that is wide area network. These two they correspond to the computer networks. So if the separation between the computers is small then we call it as local area network and if the separation between the computers is quite large we call them as wide area network. A computer network essentially connects different computers using a communication medium. In this discussion we say that the computers are connected using an optical fiber. So optical fibers are extensively used in the communications namely in optical communications, LAN and WAN. We also find their applications in medicine, medical applications. The medical applications include, as we have seen earlier, the diagnostic technique that is endoscopy. They are used in ophthalmology. They are used by cardiologists or in cardiology. They are used in cancer treatment. In ophthalmology, optical fibers are used along with a laser to reattach the detached retina and to correct defective visions and retina treatment. In cardiology, they are used to evaporate built-up plaque that is blocking the artery. To remove blocks, cancer tumors can be treated. We also find their application in military. So in military applications, optical fibers are used in military to replace the copper cables. So by replacing the copper cable based communication system to optical fiber based communication system, one can reduce the payload on the aircrafts as well as on the warships. Several tons of copper cables are used in warships and several kgs of copper cables are used in fighter jets. So these uh, copper cables are replaced by optical fibers. Similarly, they are also used in guided missiles. They are used extensively in the development of new family of sensors. In sensors, they are used to develop pressure sensors, temperature sensors, displacement sensors, liquid level monitoring sensors, force sensors and many more. In this video, we have started our discussion by stating that the fiber applications are categorized into three, illumination and short distance image transmission, communications and sensors. In the image transmission, we have discussed two different types of fiber bundles, incoherent fiber bundle and coherent fiber bundle. The coherent fiber bundle is used for image transmission. Incoherent bundles are used essentially for illuminating purpose. They are also called as flexible light carriers. Coherent optical fiber bundles, they are called as flexible image carriers. We have seen the working principle of an endoscope, which is also called as fibroscope. We have seen how they are used in communications. They are used in telecommunications. They are used in computer networks in LAN and WAN. We have seen their medical applications. They are used in diagnostics. They are used in ophthalmology, cardiology and cancer treatment. They have been used in military and they are also find their applications in sensors such as pressure sensor, temperature sensor, displacement sensors, liquid level monitoring systems and force sensors. Thank you.